We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we continue our series in the book of Genesis, the Torah. Tonight we will be in Genesis 22. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, let's. Uh, now that we invited the Holy Spirit, this is a very, very important uh, chapter of the Bible. This is a foreshadowing of uh, the Father, uh, God, God the Father. Is a t Abraham is a type of the Father here. And uh, Eleazar is his servant. And Eleazar in Hebrew means comforter. Uh, so there's going to be a type of the Holy Spirit that is a witness here. And there's going to be a type of the son, Isaac, being sacrificed to be the Lamb of God. So we're going to read this very uh, deep into the Hebrew. Because if, when you read this in the English, it doesn't pop out on the page as much as it does in the Hebrew. And uh, when you read it from the Hebrew, we'll explain exactly what is said from the original Hebrew. And it shows you how God himself is going to give up himself as the Lamb of God and how this was a great testing. Uh, in some of our other studies, we were telling you what the book of Yasser uh, says about this event. Uh, the book of Yasser tells us that God, uh, that uh, Satan went to the throne of God, similar to what uh, uh, Satan did with Job. And said to God, he said, Abraham uh, loves that son Isaac. That, that's his begotten son. He's showing more uh, emphasis on uh, Isaac and loves Isaac more than he loves you, God. Test him. You've protected Abraham. Protect him. Take away his hedge of protection. And take away his, only, his, his, his covenant child, Isaac, and see what he does. Will he curse you? Will he obey you? Does he love you more than he does that child? So that gives us a little bit more flavor of what Abraham really has to do in the testing of Isaac. We know from the scripture, uh, by doing the mathematical formulas of the genealogies, Isaac is not what you learn in, um, what you learn in uh, your uh, vacation Bible schools. That Isaac was just this little boy that walked up the hill with Abraham. He wasn't. He was, uh, I believe, 33 years old, which points to the exact time. God doesn't work in uh, uh, almost. He works in uh, a price, uh, precise. Remember, Christ was 33 years old when he, took, he went to the cross and became the Lamb of God. And this was all a three-day journey. It was three days that Christ was, died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day when he was 33 years old. And also, uh, this is on Mount Moriah. And God is going to talk specifically about this mount, this har. It's where we get the term har-mageddon. Har in Hebrew means mount. Mount of, uh, Mount of uh, um, Magadan, or in the Valley of Megiddo in the latter days. But it's talking about Mount Moriah. And Mount Moriah is the holy temple where Jesus was. And that's the holy temple where God will bring back his son, the Christ, to, to fulfill the Davidic covenant. So this goes really, really deep uh, to show you that this is a type. God is always doing a type, a foreshadowing of a real event that really occurred. Real people, real names, real ages, real everything. But it's also foreshadowing what God so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is just pointing out on this, this picture of uh, Genesis 22 for us in the Torah. So let's get into the scripture and we'll go slow and we'll tell you what it means in the Hebrew so you get a better flavor. We see an angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord, again, this is quite fascinating. As we said, an angel of the Lord is an expositional constancy. And for those who have not been following the ministry of His glory, an expositional constancy is just a fancy theological term to say the Holy Spirit is always consistent in its idioms, its numbers, its symbols, and everything is consistent. That's why when you get to the book of Revelation, everything makes sense to you. Yes, it may be in a, a, a symbol or an idiom, but the, the symbol and idiom is explained uh, elsewhere throughout the, the, the scripture. Seven is always completion. Uh, silver is always blood redemption. Um, uh, so forth and so on. Christ is the rock. He is the, the chief cornerstone, as Isaiah would say. So over and over again, it's consistent. So an angel of the Lord is a, a Old Testament appearance of Christ. So not only is this a foreshadowing of the Christ, but Christ is actually talking to Abraham. Remember when he says later on in, 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 um, in the, the Gospel of John that uh, uh, Abraham saw me and rejoiced of my coming? He's referring to this event. It's, 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 uh, it's confirming this. 
Jesus was present at this. Abraham saw it, and Abraham knew what was going to happen. The book of Hebrews also tells us that Abraham knew the resurrection of life. He knew that son, Isaac, was coming down that hill. And he was coming down because God gave a promise. He said, my promise, my everlasting covenant to you, Abraham, is through your son Isaac, and then it would be through Jacob forever. And my son, Jesus Christ, will fulfill that and the Davidic covenant. Amazing, amazing when you look at it. So Abraham knew. He had faith. He had faith that God meant what he said and said what he mean, to the point that he had the knife ready to go, and God uh, tested him to the last second, but God wasn't going to let him do that. He was just going to foreshadow that. How much do you love me? Would you give up your only begotten son? I would never require that of you because I will give up my only begotten son for this world and take it a step further. I will come down and I will take the place because I and the Father are in one. They are one in three. One God, Elohim, the manifestation of three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a third of the Trinity that is our comforter. So we don't see the Holy Spirit interact as much as the Father and the Son. It doesn't, the Holy Spirit gets the least of the glory of the Trinity. But the Holy Spirit is here as the comforter. And the comforter is what we need inside us to build us up. And we need to, we need to have more of the Holy Spirit in us. So let's get into it. Very, very incredible verse of uh, chapter of the Bible. Now it came to pass after these things that Elohim tested Abraham. He's going to test him. And uh, again, we gave you a little bit of flavor what the book of Yasser said about Satan, uh, saying that he loved this boy more uh, than God. And uh, we saw it from the last chapter. Remember how big of a deal that Abraham made out of Isaac's uh, uh, weaning. And, and uh, he knew he was the chosen son. And he loved the boy, just like any father would. But we don't put uh, any love before the God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. That's our holy, that's our holy trinity. He said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. A Abraham, listen to me. <laughs> I, got, I got some news for you. You may not going to like this. So uh, here, and he goes, and Abraham says, here, I'm here. What, what, Lord? Always what? And always, yes, Lord, and always does it right away. And that's exactly what we're supposed to do. Yes, Dad, I'll do it. That's the kind of kids you want. Yeah, yes, Dad, I'll do it and goes and, and does it. That's what God wants from us. Trust me that when I tell you to do something, it's going to be, it's not going to look good from your perspective, but I got it, and it's going to be glorious. And when I say it's going to be glorious down the road, it's going to be glorious down the road. Abraham tested, and Abraham passed the test. How many of us would pass this test? Then he said, take your own son, your only son, Isaac. Only said the only son, Isaac, because he was the chosen one. That way we know he wasn't the only son because he had Ishmael. But the only son of the covenant that he was referring to, which whom you love, as God the Father loved his only begotten son, the Christ, and go to the land of Moriah. So this is Mount Moriah, the same place that Jesus uh, got up in the temple and said, this day, and rode from the scroll of Isaiah, he said, this day this, this prophecy is be fulfilled right before your very eyes. Jesus was cru crucif crucified right outside of uh, the city of Jerusalem there. And that is where he'll come back to fulfill the Davidic covenant and the Abrahamic covenant as he sits on the mercy seat as the King of Kings and the Lord of hosts, praise his name. So in the land of Moriah, offer there a burnt offering on one of the mountains, I should tell you. So we go into the area of Moriah. There's three holy mountains in the area of Israel today are in this category. Again, no coincidence. Three is the completion of God's spirit in Judaism. And three is the Trinity. Mount Moriah is where the Temple Mount is, Mount Zion. And the Mount of Olives, where the Old Testament prophets tell us when Christ comes back, he'll split the Mount of Olives and walk through the Eastern Gate. So much so that it was, um, it was Saladin, the uh, Muslim crusader, uh, against the Christian crusaders put Muslim, uh, put Muslim dead bodies uh, in front of the Eastern Gate. They're there today when you go to Israel. And the reason he did that, he believed so much in the Torah, and he believed so much that when the high priest would come back and go through the Eastern Gate, that he couldn't because he knew that a high priest couldn't uh, touch a dead body. Therefore, he thought he could stop the Messiah from walking into the Eastern Gate. Little well, does he know that the Messiah is God, the Son of God, God, and he comes in a glorified body, and the true Eastern Gate is below that, not where it is today. So he'll split it and walk right through the Eastern Gate, exactly the way the, uh, the, the, the uh, prophets have said. Burn offering on the mountains, of which I should tell you. So Abraham rose, here he goes, rises early in the morning. How many rise early in the morning to take your son up to, uh, to, to sacrifice him? 
It's amazing. That's just faith. That's why it was accredited to Abraham as righteous. He builds us up with his faith because he trusts God. you got to have love. Then you have faith that whenever God tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And to go through with it. He wants us to go through. He wants us to walk. He wants us to take a step forward and trust. Are you going to walk? Are you going to get up first thing in the morning and go? As Abraham does. He saddled his donkey. Why does the Holy Spirit tell us this is a donkey? Because a donkey is, was a symbol, and even though we don't have kings yet, is a symbol of kingship later on. I remember hearing a story about this, uh, um, this uh, I can't remember his name, and I, nor should I say his name, but he's a prosperity teacher saying, God, Jesus would want me to have this uh, $80 million airplane because do you think Jesus would go into Jerusalem on a donkey? No, he would be, he'd, he'd be flying on an $80 million air aircraft. And you just shake your head and you go, no, he wouldn't, because you have no idea. You don't know the Old Testament. The riding in on a donkey symbolizes that he's a king. He will ride in on a donkey. He will be on a donkey because he will be the king. Remember when Jesus saw, they said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord, when he rode in on a donkey? He was so showing the nation of Israel, before they didn't believe it, before he became the Lamb of God, that he was the king. He was the anointed one, but they rejected him the first time. The second time he will be on a donkey again. He won't need a $60 million airplane. He's God. Oh, read your Old Testament. <laughs> Join us in Genesis 22. Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey. The Holy Spirit's telling us a donkey because a king will be riding in on a donkey. And took two of his young men with him. One we know is Eleazar. Eleazar, remember, was uh, Abraham's a servant that was going to get the inheritance until... Uh, Ishmael and uh, Isaac, because uh, 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 Sarah was barren, uh, so he was going to take it. So Eliezer is a type of a servant, and the Holy Spirit is a type of a servant. And that's uh, Eliezer, again, means comforter, and uh, that's what our Holy Spirit is. He's called the comforter. And met with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood and, uh, for the burnt offering and arose and went up to the place of which Elohim told him. So he told him exactly where to go took the, the, the wood to do the burnt offering. Then on the third day, third day, this is where the Christ rise again, third day. No coincidence, it's three. Three is always the number of the Trinity. As we said before, in Judaism, it is the perfection of God's spirit is what the number three means in Judaism. On the third day, Abraham, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off, the Mount Moriah, the holy, holy area of God. Oh, what a place, great place that is. Again, as we mentioned many times, you've you got to go to Israel because when you go up to Mount Moriah, when you're standing on, standing on the Mount of Olives and you go into Mount Zion and you go into the old city, it's just, oh, the Bible comes alive. It's Abraham went up there. Oh, and our Christ is going to reign and rule from there. The Bible's just like, it's in 4D, uh, HD, uh, the highest vision you could possibly have. Just glorious. And the Spirit of God is there. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the, don with the donkey, the lad, and I will go in yonder and worship, and we'll come back to you. He didn't tell him what he was doing. He was going to just go up there. Um, but he says, I will, I will, We'll come back. He, he wasn't just trying to blow him off. He, was, he knew he's coming back with Isaac. Or, yeah, coming back with Isaac, because God told him he was. There's an everlasting covenant with Isaac. The book of Hebrews confirms that. And Christ confirms that because he said, Abraham saw me on that day, and he knew of my coming. What had to happen? I would have to go and take the place of where Isaac and he went up. He saw me because I'm the angel of the Lord. I will go up in yonder and worship, and I will come back to you. God always comes back to us. And the Holy Spirit's there, and his kingship, his donkey, is waiting for him to come back. And he will come back for you. He will come back to us. So Abraham took the wood and burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand. So he put all the wood on his son. So you know he wasn't a little boy. He, he, he was strong. He was 33 years old. You take all the wood. Now, Abraham's old now. So Abraham's got to go all the way up there, uh, up the mountain. And Mount Moriah, is, it's, it's, it's more than a mount. It's, it's, it's a mountain. You've got to climb up there. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife. And the two, uh, the two of them went together. One and the two, the father and the son. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Isaac said, Wait, 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 wait a minute. I don't see the lamb. First of all, how would he know that there was a lamb? Because there was, the law didn't come to Moses. God never said anything about sacrificing lamb. So he knew that a lamb, an innocent lamb, had to be sacrificed. 
And that innocent lamb is going to be, a t Isaac is a type of the Christ, the, the lamb of God. The Passover lamb, again, this was before Passover became Passover under Moses. So he's foreshadowing that the lamb of God is going to take the sins of the world away. And by my son, my God, will provide the lamb for a burnt offering. Okay, so here you read this and he says, if you read this in the English, you'll say, my God, uh, my son, Elohim will provide, uh, will provide a, a lamb for the burnt offering. That's not what it says in Hebrew. What it says in Hebrew, it says, it says uh, Elohim himself will be, is, is the lamb for the burnt offering. So if you read this in the Hebrew, he's saying God is himself the lamb for the, he, God is going to be the, God is the lamb. He's not saying he's providing a lamb. He's saying he, he is the lamb that will be for the burnt offering. So he's foreshadowing that God would be the, the lamb, the, 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 the Passover lamb, that Jesus Christ as God, the son of God, would be the lamb of God and, ta and, this, and take away uh, the, the, the sins of the world. And that's exactly what it says in Hebrew. It's absolutely amazing, grammatically correct, when you look at it, what it means in Hebrew. It means God himself is the lamb. Well, you don't pick that up in your normal English. So the two of them went together. So they went up there together, and the Father and the Son are always together. Then they came to the place where God had told them. And Abraham built an altar there and, the plate, and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. So he did exactly the way the Lord said, put the wood together. And this is where it's tough because Abraham had to stretch out his arm. Can you imagine stretching out your arm? But you know God's going to get God's got it, and God would never tell you to do something. But why would God never tell you to do something? This is where you really got to trust God, because God would never go against His word. If he, if Abraham took Isaac up there, and God says to sacrifice Isaac, that's 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 murder. And thou shalt not kill, even though the law doesn't come out later. Abraham had the moral law. So if God told Abraham to kill innocently his son, that would go against God's precepts and commandments. So uh, he, he didn't do that. And, he, uh, I, and I, Abraham trusted him. And we're going to see again, it's confirmed in Hebrews and confirmed in the gospel of Christ telling us. So he laid on the altar upon them. He stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. You kind of, kind of, God, are you, uh, uh, okay, any second now, God, you can, you, can, you can grab my hand now before I do it. But the angel, so who comes up? This is where Jesus was referring to that when, when Abraham saw me. When it, but the angel of the Lord, again, this is a thanopony, the angel of Jehovah called to him and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. Uh, and he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear Elohim. And uh, again, this is taken, this is more in the, in, the, in the English. It's more direct saying, now that I know you fear me, Elohim. So it's not as if it's a angel speaking on the behalf of God. He's saying, uh, I know you fear Elohim. Uh, grammatically perfect in the Hebrew, meaning it's him. He is the one. G Jesus as the second head, the son of God. Do not lay your hand on the ladder, do anything for him, for now, for now I know you fear Elohim, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. So we pass the test. But it's also a foreshadowing that what God the Father would do with his only begotten son. But Christ mentioned this in the gospel. He was there to see it. Abraham knew what God was going to do. Abraham knew that the Christ was going to do this. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. And there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So God provided. God provided a way out that the Lamb of God was not going to be sacrificed at that time. The Lamb of God was going to be God himself coming down as a man and his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to be the Lamb of God. And, but God gave him a ram to sacrifice instead. And Isaac being, or Abraham being old of age, he made the ram get caught in a thicket. Otherwise, Abraham was too old to try to wrestle down a ram. Can you imagine trying to, I can't catch a ram. I'd have a hard time catching a ram in, in my 20s, let alone uh, 100 and some years old. So he caught the ram, uh, and the ram, uh, it, it's fascinating that the ram, this is just conjecture, but it's pointing to the, rams, uh, the ram and also Christ. And I believe uh, his, his second coming, the harpazo of the church. Because the, the ram is where we get the shofar. The ram's horn is the shofar. And the Feast of Shofars is the fifth of the, which is grace, is the fifth festival on the Hebrew calendar. And it's the blowing of the shofar, the, black, the last trump, which will be the harpazo of the church. 
So is the, is the Holy Spirit going deeper in the meeting with a ram to tell us that is the shofar that will be blown at this event that will come back that the Messiah, the King, will take his church and be married to him and then come back after the end of the seven years of tribulation and, and sit on the mercy seat in Mount Moriah, this exact spot. Praise the name of the Most High. So Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. You'll hear this a lot in the, in the scripture. You hear this a lot in Judaism, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. He is our provider. Meaning, trust me, I will provide. Don't worry about it. His great saying that uh, I saw, on, we, we posted on our His Glory, one of our His Glory uh, uh, pictures that we put up on, I think it's on Facebook and Instagram. Um, how many, the, the Bible never tells us once, that just worry about it. Because God, God provides. He's, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's the provider. If you trust me, you love me, you trust me, and you walk hand in hand with me, I am your Jehovah Jireh. I will provide. I will provide everything you need. Not everything you want, but everything you need to fulfill my purpose. And Abraham was given everything he needed to provide for God. Uh, or God provide for him to complete his perfect uh, perfection and to show us the way. Give us that faith, that truth, that hope, that build us up to, to, to show his glory. If Abraham could have this great faith and how deep the scripture goes to pointing that, that there would be a savior that would come and take the sins of the world away with the lamb of God, the Passover lamb. Wow, the, the, the scripture is so deep. And it said to this day, in the mount of Jehovah it shall provide. The Mount of Jehovah is the word Har, the Har of Jehovah. That is his mount. That is his mountain. That is where God will reign through Jesus Christ for the Davidic covenant. As, as the Lord's Prayer says, well, your kingdom come, hallowed, first of all, hallowed be thy name of the Most High God. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's what the Father says to the Son. It's time. Take your bride, the harpazo, blow the shofar. The church is harpazoed up. The Holy Spirit goes up with the church. Seven years of tribulations of the times of Jacob's trouble the world has never seen. End of that, the Christ comes back to the second and ushers in the Davidic covenant as, as, the, Lord, as the Father says, you sit at my footstool, footstool to my right and I'll make your enemies my, your footstool. And David will be fulfilling that as well as the king of Israel again and Christ will be the king of kings, Lord of hosts because the Father put all authority underneath the Son. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And that day is coming soon. So the angel of the Lord, again, a thanopony of the Christ, called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. He said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord. So if you read this in the Hebrew, yeah, I guess technically an, an angel could say, yes, by myself I have sworn, but God told me to say yes by myself. doesn't make a lot of sense because the, the, the angel would say, thus says the Lord, or a prophet would say, thus says the Lord. But the angel, the angel of the Lord is clearly saying, by myself, I have, that would be blasphemy to God. This is Christ, says the Jehovah, saying the Jehovah, because you have done this thing and have not withhold your son, your only son. You've been blessed. You've passed the test, Abram. Abraham, blessing, I will bless you. And that's what God will bless us as well. Not with the things we want, but the things we need for, for his purpose and his glory. He's got a plan for us, and he's going to fulfill that plan for us, and we will have all, everything we need to fulfill that plan and more. Not what we want, but what we need for his purpose and his glory. He provided for Abraham. He'll provide for us to complete his purpose in our life. Blessings, I will bless you and multiply. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And that will happen. The gate of their enemies, the descendants of the line of Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob, then ultimately to, through Judah, through David, through the Messiah, the king out of the line of Judah will be fulfilling all this in the Davidic covenant and the Abrahamic covenant. But this literally happened to Abraham because Abraham is considered the father of three world religions. You have him of Judaism, obviously Christianity, and he's also the father of the, uh, the religion of the, uh, Islam. And that's exactly what he's done. He's the father. He's out of all of them through Ishmael and Isaac created all these through the, the, the descendants is exactly the way God said it would happen. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you obeyed my voice. You are obedient to me, Abraham, 
and they will be blessed because you're your blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. That's the promise that Abraham have, had had, and that's the promise to uh, a, a, a Abraham, Isaac, and Israel today. Those who bless Israel will be blessed, and those who curse Israel, uh, Israel will be cursed. So Abraham returned to his young man and rose up and went to Beersheba. Remember the, the oath of the seven wells. That's what Beersheba means, and that is God's opening uh, of his oath, swearing that he would uh, uh, do what he say and say what he means. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba, the seven, the oath of the seven wells. Now it came to pass after these things, it was told Abraham, indeed, Milcah also has borne children to your brother Nahor. So now he's got to find a wife for Isaac. And it's got to be of the tribe because God told him that you've got to be in the genealogy of the tribe. You got to do, you, we got to keep the bloodline going. Now it came to pass after these, that it was told to Abraham, said, Indeed, Milcah also has born your son and your brother Nahor. Hughes, uh, Huz was the firstborn, Buzz his brother, uh, Chemo, the father of Aram. Uh, Chizd, Hazo, Peldish, Jidla, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begot Rebekah. Rebekah will become the bride of Isaac. And what a beautiful thing is uh, that this happens. Uh, these eight Milcah born to Nahor, Abraham's brother. So just a coincidence that there's eight in the family. Eight is the number of a new beginning. There's a new beginning with Isaac uh, that will keep the Jacob and uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. And there's a new beginning with Christ after the millennial reign. We're in a tabernacle with the Lord, the Christ, the Messiah, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A new heaven and a new earth. We will be literally tabernacling with the Lord outside of time and space. That's why there's no sun, moon, or sea anymore in a redone earth. And it'll be his light will be the Shekinah glory. It will be the kavod. It will be his literal essence that we will be in. Uh, what a great day is, and that's on the eighth day. Uh, and that is uh, after the white throne judgment. And his concubine, whose name is Ruma, and his also Teba, Geham, Theash, and Mecca. So this is finishing up Genesis 22, the incredible story, the real story, and the foreshadowing of what God did uh, with his only begotten son to show us that everything in the Bible is for our gleaning. Everything in the Bible is to lift us up, give us, give us hope. As Paul says in 2 Timothy, Timothy 3.16, all scripture, not some scripture, all scriptures God breathed for our edification, for our doctrine, to build us up, give us hope. We get great hope from Abraham here. We get great hope that he had such faith to fulfill this. And we have such great hope. And I say the English hope. I'm more talking about the Greek word hope and the Hebrew word for hope because it's not hope. It's take it to the bank. Abraham didn't flip a coin and say, gee, I hope God is going to let me have Isaac come down the hill. He knew he was coming down that hill. That's called faith and faith in God because he knew God put his name above it and he gave him a promise. And when God gives you a promise, it's going to happen. And it's going to happen and it's going to happen in a big way. We pray that this has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you today and always. God bless you.